Let's fly with manta rays. Hey guys, it's Brandon, and welcome back to another episode of Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. Today we will discover the manta ray. This is part two of my two-part episodes. Today we will be learning about the manta ray instead of how I do my paintings. I have only seen manta rays in captivity, and I would love to have the opportunity to go see them in person in the wild. If you live near a zoo or an aquarium, or even have the opportunity to see wild giant manta rays in person, I strongly re recommend going seeing them in person. Even if it's not a giant ray, I know several aquariums and zoos have exhibits where you can interact with different kinds of rays, and I've been to a few of them and I love how they feel, how their wings feel, and just having the interaction with that creature is so wonderful. So let's learn about these wonderful creatures together on a fun adventure. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Manta birostris, or the giant oceanic manta ray, are the largest ray species in the world. This species can be found all around the globe in tropical, subtropical, and sometimes in temperate ocean waters. The manta ray is known for its large size and graceful swimming that looks like flying. Some of the largest rays recorded were 9.1 meters across, which is roughly 30 feet wide. The average size today is 5 meters across, or 16.4 feet. These animals weigh just over 2 tons at adulthood. Funny how something so large can be so majestic and graceful. The giant manta ray has triangular pectoral fins, also called wings, two cephalic lobes that direct food into their rectangular mouth and are dorsally flattened, meaning that they are wider than they are tall. Their eyes are forward facing and can be found near the cephalic lobes and have gills on the ventral surface or the underbelly. The manta does have a dorsal fin, but it is small and found near the long thin tail. Manta rays are related to stingrays but do not have the barb like their cousin. The manta has nodules or bumps in place of the barbed stinger. Now that is all important, but we still haven't discovered what coloration the manta has. That all depends on the location of the manta in the world. Most fall into the chevron morph, where they are darker on the dorsal surface and lighter on the ventral surface, with large pale shoulder marks. Some regions have brown, others have black, and some even have a silver blue coloration. The ventral surface is always lighter in color and can range from white to silver or even a coffee cream coloration. The belly has dark patches and spots that can be used like fingerprints to identify the individual rays. We will next discover some fun behavioral facts about the manta, then finish with diet, predation, and the threat level of the manta. Let's talk about the behaviors now. When swimming, the manta uses its large pectoral fins or wings to swim effortlessly. They can swim in a remarkably straight line when in the ocean and lazily and in any direction that pleases them when near a reef. A fun activity that can be seen are front and back flips when feeding. Their cephalic lobes are typically rolled into a spiral when swimming and unroll to direct water into their mouth while feeding. The manta are also known for leaping out of the water and landing with a loud slap. Researchers are still trying to figure out if this is a form of communication or just play. One behavior that you might be lucky to witness is called a mating train. A large female will be swimming along during mating season, then a male will follow her. But it might not just be one male that follows the female. It can be two, five, or even ten males following a single female for the chance to mate. Let's get to the diet of the manta. Now you may be thinking to yourself, that is such a large creature, it must eat other large creatures, correct? Well, 
No, actually. That is a great guess. But they are filter feeders and eat zooplankton. They eat shrimp, krill, and other small crustaceans, and that is it. Granted, they eat roughly 13% of their body weight in one week, so they do eat a lot, but their prey is not large. Speaking of prey, now we get to discover what eats the manta ray. The manta ray can seem lazy and whimsical at times, but when threatened, they can reach speeds of 15 miles an hour, meaning that you need to be fast in order to catch one. Can you think of anything that likes to swim fast and catch prey that also has large teeth? Let's think about this for a second. Large, fast swimmer, large teeth found in tropical and subtropical waters. Did you think of a shark? Well, you would be correct. The manta is prey to tiger shark, the great hammerhead, and the bull shark. But, we have also learned about another predator that can swim fast, has large teeth, and enjoys hunting. It turns out that when I was researching predators, our friend the orca came up again. That means that I have mentioned the orca whale in every single episode of Nature Meets Paper as a predator. That means we should do an orca episode sometime. But we need to go back to the mantas. As of the time we went on this adventure together, the giant manta ray was listed as vulnerable in the IUCN Red List. The IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and they monitor the world's populations of animals and have a scale that determines the risk of that animal going extinct. So let's take this time to appreciate the beauty and wonder that the manta ray brings to us. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint and capture the beauty of this animal. I call this piece Sun Rays, for obvious reasons. Looks like we're out of time for this adventure, but that's alright, because you have the opportunity to go out, do some research, go experience these animals for yourself, and become a scientist. Anyone can be a scientist, and, any, and everyone should go on adventures. Now remember, if you learned something new or made a new discovery, share that discovery with somebody else. Because when you teach, you learn the most. I want to thank you all for going on this adventure with me. I love learning about marine biology and this channel gives me the opportunity to learn more about the marine world that we know so little about. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow along on our weekly adventures, or even get in the conversation, the comments down below is a great place to start. Also, make sure to subscribe because I do a, a new episode every single weekend. I just want to let you guys know that I do sell art. I make, I take requests. Um, I can make a print for you. I can make, uh, I can sell you my originals. I'm open to anything. If you have an idea that you want to see on this show, make sure to contact me and we'll try and get it figured out either with a uh, commission or just by your suggestions. If you want to follow along on works in progress during, throughout the week and keep in touch with me, follow me on my Facebook page, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. Now I use Instagram a little more than Twitter, so I do have a Twitter account, but I use it a little bit less than my Instagram. I have been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.